Welcome back to the Dividend Diplomats YouTube channel. You've got Bertha Hurtlocker over there, and you know you've rolling with Big L, the Dividend Diplomats, and we can't wait to talk to you about May 2021 Dividend Stock Watch List. You know the drill, everybody. Before we get going here, smash that subscribe button. Give us that thumbs up. We are cruising to 10,000 subscribers, so everybody... Thank you for your support over the year as we've launched our YouTube channel. We've been pumped up. We're ready to go. But today, it's not to talk about our YouTube channel. It's to talk about the three stocks that we are thinking are undervalued dividend stocks to buy here for the month of May. Three dividend stocks, undervalued, dividend growth, names no full well, I mean, right now it's very hard to find undervalued dividend stock investments as the S&P uh, 500 <laughs> continues to crush, crush higher as earnings are being released. I mean, they're almost is, hitting 3,200. Is that PE ratio at 50 yet? Because it sure is trending that way. I mean, earnings releases have been better. You know, I know you've noticed it, Bert. Um, I and have. And I would say, you know, dividend investing is probably stronger than it's ever been this year. Um, yeah, we are. We, we kept talking about how April was going to be a strong month for dividend increases. And we talked about that in the video. We had nine big ones coming in. Man, oh, man, did it deliver. That was a fun month of dividend increases. I mean, April's where it's at. Could be the best month of being a dividend investor. Increases are coming out the wood grain right now at this point. You know, but again, as we put together the watch list, we always try to find at least three undervalued dividend stocks. And I'll say, you know, at least one of them is a stock that I've been buying throughout the week. Um, you know, oh, how, do we find, uh, how do we find these undervalued dividend stocks, Bert? We get out the shovel, we go to the backyard and we start digging. But really, we use our dividend diplomats, dividend stock screener, three metrics, PE ratio less than the S&P 500. Number two, payout ratio less than 60%. Third, history of increasing dividends. And lastly, if they pass all three, we move into that bonus metric where we talk about the dividend yield. No, exactly, Burton. I mean, hey, all three of these dividend stocks, you know, the metrics are looking sound. You know, a couple of them have the perfect dividend ratio. And again, three different industries we are talking about here that could be great for uh, investing, you know, uh, that's just starting out, you know, a, a novice investor or, hey, Maybe you already own these three stocks and you're looking to add to your yeah. current position, like Burton, possibly what I've been doing. Yeah. And I'll just say this, I'll segue into our first stock, but you know how these stocks are great. It's not just for novice investors. Guess who just recently bought dividend stock number one on our watch list? The Oracle of Omaha himself, Warren Buffett, this first company is Verizon, ticker symbol VZ. So there's your lesson right there. Beginning investor, experienced investor, buy quality companies and grow your passive income with dividend growth stocks. But that's right. Number one is Verizon. I tell you what, Verizon leading the pack with 5G, dropping billions upon billions of dollars to be the winner of the 5G auction with AT&T, ticker symbol T falling right behind. You know, Verizon, you know, it's, again, it's trying to get into the fiber, uh, you know, in your home, trying to be, you know, a leader in that category. But again, you know, 5G, they want to make sure that they are the leader of the pack right there. Warren Buffett dropped $8 billion on them. Um, they've been hovering around that 55 to $59 stock price. And lately, they've dipped finally back below $57 per share. Mm -hmm. But you want to go through some yeah. of these wonderful metrics of Verizon communications. Yep, you got it. So let's talk through here with the stock price at the time of this video of 56.32, the forward earnings of 509. That gives you a PE ratio of just over 11. Their annual dividends, $2.51. Take that divided by the 509.40 EPS. That gives you a payout ratio of 49%. That's that perfect payout ratio right there. Payout ratio, Verizon just piled drive that bad boy to the mat right there. Exactly, Lanny. They've increased their dividend for 15 years, and they have a 2% five-year average dividend growth rate. And last, but definitely not least with that bonus metric, the dividend yield, it's a solid 4.46%. Guys, 4.46% yield. Very sweet right now. I mean, again, you know, dividend growth rate, I know, historically has been very low. They're becoming kind of like the AT&T growth, growth uh, dividend stock. 
Um, however, they have much more room to continue to grow that dividend. Um, you know, Verizon, you get paid 4.46%, which is a heck of a lot better than what your idle cash is sitting there doing jack squat in your bank account. Yeah, you're darn straight, Lanny. As you can see, the metrics show why this is an undervalued dividend stock that you should be watching. Moving on to company number two right here, we're moving into the consumer staple sector. No, we're not talking about Procter & Gamble, ticker symbol PG, that increased that dividend in April. We're talking about their arch rival here, Unilever, ticker symbol UL, the consumer staple giant. Lanny, do you want to talk about and list off a few of the brands that are in their portfolio? Yeah, Unilever, you probably have some maybe in your refrigerator, in your bathroom cabinet, your bedroom. You know, we're talking Breyers ice cream. You've got Dove, um, Axe deodorant, if I can remember. Um, yeah. You know, obviously, you know, Lipton, Bert's favorite, Hellman's mayonnaise. He puts it on everything, his cereal, his pizza. You know, his yep, everything. Can never have enough Hellman's, that's for sure. But they got the Lipton tea, the Pure Leaf brewed tea as well. Did you mention Dove soap too? I did. I did mention that. Um, yeah. You know, they have Bob, St. Ives, Q-Tip. Vaseline, they got it all. I mean, that's that's why we like these kind of companies. You can find them in everybody's household. And that's why companies like Unilever have demonstrated their ability to increase their dividend over the long haul because – these stocks are almost recession proof because think about what was happening in 2020 when times were getting tough with the pandemic and the economy was shutting down. People were hoarding consumer staples and buying up these products like crazy because you still need them on a day-to-day -day basis. People were hoarding those Q-tips. They were like, all these Q-tips are mine. Get, get your own. Yeah. You know, <laughs> lost a couple of closets full of Q-tips. So. Yeah. Hey, you can never have too many. You never know when you're going to need them. Right, Lanny? <laughs> but let's run through the metrics here. Let's run them through the stock screen. At the time of this video, their price was $56.49. Their forward earnings are, we're estimating $3.06. That gives you a PE ratio of 18.46. Annual dividend, $2.05 here. With a nice little conservative estimate, that gives you four EPS of 306. A payout ratio just above our 60% at 67%. And then, Lanny, you want to talk about the dividend growth because I love I love hearing you talk about this because I can always sense the frustration when you talk about it. So Unilever, they're an international company. Um, so you know that it's an American depository receipt or an ADR. Uh, they're based in the UK. So their dividend is really hard. Just, just currency translation, gosh darn it. And <laughs> the, the websites will show that the five-year average is around 8%. I'll say it's actually around 4%. I always say, hey, let me just divide it by two. The, the, reason, the reason why I asked Lanny to do it is because it drives Lanny insane when he can't figure out the exact dividend growth rate. So I had to tease him a little bit and pass that one back into his court. I mean, the yield, you know, right now after, you know, after that PE ratio of just over 18, a, a decent payout ratio, a little bit on the high side, but, you know, between that's pretty comparable to Procter Gamble. Mm -hmm. uh, the yield is at 3.63%, so above 3.5%, which is really cool to see. Yes, like what you were saying with Verizon, it's still a strong premium compared to your savings account, so that's what you want to see. So again, just like Verizon with Unilever, the metrics check the boxes for why we're considering them a stock to buy here in the coming month of May. Moving into the third company, we just featured a video about this company, so this really that's should be a surprise on you. So let's see, everybody. You guessed it. That's right. Company number three, Pfizer, ticker symbol PFE, the pharmaceutical giant that has been pumping out the COVID vaccine. I know I got my second vaccine shot last week. There it is, Lanny, at the corner of what is it, happy and healthy right there? Right. At the happy at the corner of happy and dividend aristocrat. Yep. Yeah, that's supporting two dividend stocks that Lanny owns right there, getting the Pfizer vaccine at Walgreens. And a Band-Aid probably from Johnson & Johnson. <laughs> Yeah. You never know. That's perfect. That's that's why we love these companies. Again, they are in your life every single day, whether you realize it or not. It's not just Unilever's brands in your household. So yeah, but the third dividend stock on the watch list is Pfizer, ticker symbol PFV. They just announced some big news. Check the link to the video above because the board has stated that they are going to maintain their dividend despite the spinoff of their Upjohn business with Mylan. So they've been paying a 39 cent quarterly dividend and we anticipated a drop of that due to that uh, spinoff. 
with the new company called Viatris. So because now that the dividends are at least staying the same, probably an increase come this December 2021 teaser, um, that the yield now looks better. Um, you know, it's more valuable to continue to own Pfizer stock because now you're not anticipating a decrease to your income. Um, but Bert, we're not here to just hear about the income. We're here to see, is this an undervalued stock? So what are the metrics? Yep. Let's run through them. Stock price, 38.45 at the time we're recording. 4 DPS is $3.38. PE ratio, 11.38, just a hair above Verizon. Their dividend, as we just talked about, annual, 156 divided by that forward earnings. You get a payout ratio that is oh so perfect at 46% right there. They've increased that dividend for 10 plus years. And as Lanny may have set the record for the longest teaser ever of eight months of him teasing a dividend increase right there. We'll expect number 11 here come December. Their five-year dividend growth rate is very solid too. It's at 6%. Lastly, with that bonus metric, the dividend yield, it's 4.06%. So another high yielding dividend stock is on the watch list. But this one, what's nice about it is that 6% growth rate to go with that 4% yield. Love it. Got to love it. The double digit combo, Bert. Thanks for dropping the hammer right there on Pfizer. I mean, if Pfizer doesn't choke slam the metrics, I don't know what will. Um, it's almost like between them and Verizon, you could start calling them the brothers of destruction. <laughs> I like it. I don't know where that leaves Unilever. Unilever is going to be the awkward third member of Paul that. Paul Bear. Paul Bear. Okay, I love it. <laughs> but in all seriousness, the Verizon stock. <laughs> you know, ever. <laughs> but let's just rip through. We're not going to go through each metric on here. We're going to put up a nice chart with all three of them right here for you. See, so just remember the three stocks we're going to be watching here in the month of May are Verizon, Unilever, and Pfizer. All three with new, with three and a half percent plus dividend yields with strong signs of undervaluations based on the three metrics of the dividend diplomats dividend stock screener. And, you know, during the week of, you know, April 26th, I've been picking up a share here and there of Verizon. So just to let the community know, you know, I am dropping um, deploying capital out there in the market. Granted, it's a share here and there. Um, but as it's coming down, I've been trying to grab another share. Obviously, do your own, make your own decision. But I want to let, let you know that I'm putting my money where my mouth is. And that's the beauty of it. And that's what we try to do on our YouTube channel here. So please, in the comment section, let us know what companies you're watching. Let us know what you think of these three companies on our watch list as well. We love the feedback and we love learning about other undervalued dividend stocks that we should also be considering to buy in the month of May. Right, yeah. Out of the three, which one do you think is the most undervalued? You can see our metrics, but what do you think is the best one? Um, yeah. And Bert, Bert, have you made any moves recently on any of these three? Not on these three, but I did add 10 shares of Vitris the other day too. So based on the result of our video. Whoa. Yeah, we're really dropping the capital in the market at that nice $13 per share share price. But money was put to work and that's what's important. So everyone, please, if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel and give us that thumbs up. Again, thank you everybody. And make sure you leave something in the comment section. We love it. Again, we appreciate you guys for stopping by the Dividend Diplomats YouTube channel. That was Bert, and this is Lanny from the Dividend Diplomats, over and out.